and just listening to C-SPAN and listening to all the, well, for lack of a better word, nonsense concerning the budget. What a joke. What an absolute joke. Folks, listen. There must be a demand of the American people for an audit. We must demand it. There's got to be an audit. These areas where there is leakage, where there is uh, holes in the bag, so to speak. Folks, trillions, listen to Brother Joseph, trillions of dollars are unaccounted for. Trillions. I, I didn't say trillion, I said trillions. Unaccounted for. No oversight. And we just take their word for it. How come nobody demands an audit? Ah, I mean, hey. If a red flag went up on you, the IRS would be auditing you quick. How come there's no audit of the U.S. government? And folks, listen, that's a dictatorship. That's communism. When the Fed is not being audited, when the Pentagon's not being audited, when our government is not being audited, when there is no oversight, how do they get away with that? You and I wouldn't. The companies, the businesses, small business sector would not get away with it. I was working for a guy that was basically a middleman, third party, building uh, some uh, coping, different things for Costco buildings, and they audited him found out that he owed them $40,000. So if they're going to go after a little guy like that, what in the world, people? Why aren't we auditing our own government? And I did say our government. Every single person in the government is supposed to be working for us. Did you hear what I said? That doesn't make us their boss, as some people would like to believe. No. It's just a different position. We're all supposed to be working together. But these people that are elected and put into office are supposed to be there because they're qualified. Right? That's why they're there. You and I, we're not qualified. If we were, we'd run and we'd be elected and we'd be in those positions or we'd uh, go to college or whatever it takes to get those positions. But that doesn't mean they have the right to get away with anything they want to do. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there is insider things going on right now, with this, even with the small business, even with the business sector that are going on right now where small businesses are involved in producing robotic, uh, GPS, uh, Internet, where small businesses, where there's deals going on behind the scenes. There's deals going on that you don't know about. Are you listening? There's things going on where contracts are being signed with certain companies 
That's what keeps the war machine going. Somebody is gaining on the on the in profiting off the lives of Americans. Now I've told you this in the past. It is blood that fuels the war. Not gasoline, not oil, blood. It is human blood. That's what fuels the war machine. When you run out of blood, you have no more war. Did you hear what I said? Somebody wants to keep the war going. But somebody doesn't want America to win anymore. Somebody does not want America to win anymore. When you hear Donald Trump saying we don't win anymore, well, to a large degree, he's right. Because somebody doesn't want us to win anymore. Did you know right now we are not in a full state of readiness? Our military is not ready right now. We would lose a lot of soldiers right now because we're not ready. We're supposed to have at least one soldier per so- to a soldier to support another soldier. For every one soldier, there should be two. There should be at, at least one, but it'd be better to have two to support that soldier. Right now, we're in trouble. Somebody wants it that way. Somebody is deliberately weakening the United States of America. Now you know as well as I do that the international bankers are playing a chess game and they play both sides. And to them it's just a game. But to you, it's your children. It's your livelihood. It's your freedom. To them, it's just a game. It's a war game. And before it's all over with, their their plan is to put the robots up against the humans. It's a game. That's what's coming to people. Sure, they're going to bring in the robots like they're supposed to be aiding the humans. But their plan is to put the robots up against the humans. We see that in Hollywood, RoboCop, all these other movies that are coming out. As the elite, the international bankers, these murderers, sit back and watch the show. It's going back to what we see in Rome, when they threw Christians to the lions as a form of entertainment. Did you hear what I said? Romans would gather together with their children, like you and I would gather together to watch a football game. And they would watch human beings Godly human beings, God's people, trying to save their lives, fighting for their life, up against lions. And this was a form of entertainment. Are you listening, folks? We don't have a problem with the budget. As far as, I should say, we don't have a problem with money. We have a problem with those that are keeping the budget. We have a problem with those that are supposed to be balancing the budget. You know what they say, figures don't lie, but liars sure do figure. Somebody's doing some lying, and there's no oversight, and nobody's taking them to task. It's like it's almost like hands are tied in Washington. It's like it's like people are sitting on their hands. They don't dare to speak above a whisper.
bunch of cowards. That's what they are. They're cowards. Afraid to say it, uh, say what what's going on. We know what's going on. Somebody is profiting off the war, off the blood. And I'm not going to say of the innocents, but I will say the blood of our children. And there are several generals, several of those that have left the military or have been removed from their positions because they will no longer be a part of the atrocities. I just told you about a military man that literally took his life, told his wife he couldn't live like this anymore, knowing what he himself was a part of. He took his own life. While George Bush Jr. made up a joke, no weapon mass, west, weapons of mass destruction over here. This man took his life, Mr. Bush, because he couldn't live with himself. How do you live with yourself, sir? How do you sleep at night knowing that the blood of those soldiers is on your hands. Mr. Bush, the blood of those soldiers is all over your hands. You are as guilty as guilty could be. Mr. Cheney, your hands are full of blood. There's blood on your hands. I could go right down the list, right down the line of those in this country with blood on their hands. Their day is coming. Their day is coming. God is not mocked. They may try to pull over on us, but they're not fooling God. Their day is coming. They will reap what they have sown. We must demand an audit. Did you hear what I said? We must. It is our duty. We must set up a petition. This is the most civil way to fight people. We must demand an audit of our government. We must demand an audit of the Pentagon, of the Fed. You know, when they mentioned that about auditing the Fed, the previous... uh, person over the Fed there, forgot his name right now off the top of my head, but anyway, he laughed. Bernanke, Ben Bernanke, he laughed when they said, we need to audit. I think it was uh, Paul, uh, Ron Paul that said, we need to audit the Fed, and Bernanke laughed about it. You know why he was laughing? He was laughing because he knows that'll never happen. It'll never happen. Did you know that the Pope can do anything he wants to do and get away with it? Because it's considered not sin if the Pope does it. How's that any different in Washington? Do anything you want to do and get away with it. Hey, they can get away with it in this world, but they're they're not getting away with anything. They can take their secrets to the graves. But God knows, and they will receive justice. They will receive justice. You can find peace in that, my brothers and sisters. You that are listening to this message, you can find peace in the fact that they will receive justice. Justice will be served by the Almighty God. 
you can find peace in that. That's how I that's where I get my peace from, knowing that vengeance is the Lord's. He will repay. It's not me, it's not my part to take vengeance to myself, to take things into my own hands or to get angry at my own government. No. But I find peace. In fact, I find solidity. I I find solidity. I mean, I I find myself in a place of tremendous peace knowing that my God is going to take this all and deal with it one day. He didn't call me to take care of it. The Lord didn't call me to judge the government. In fact, God didn't call me to judge any man. Are you listening? All the corruption. (coughs) All the corruption that's going on today is going to be brought to judgment. Now the question is, are you going to come out from among them? Are you going to separate yourself from the corruption? Are you going to separate yourself from the deceitful? Are you going to separate yourself from the dishonest? Are you going to be different? Come out. Come out of her, my people. Take no part. What we are seeing before our eyes today, we are seeing Babylon, the great, taking over the earth. It's not just a small country. The whole world is becoming Babylon. The system of the beast, Babylon. It's taking over the world. The whole world. The Babylon system is being set up. It's not just one country. Not just one city. It's the whole world. But we can come out from it. We must come out from it. We must be sincere. We must be honest. Amen. We must keep the feast with unleavened bread, sincerity and truth. Do not allow yourself to become corrupted by those that are corrupted. Do not allow yourself to become tainted by those that are defiled. Keep yourself unspotted. Keep yourself clean. Keep yourself clean and holy. Keep your garments clean. Don't be like those in the tribulation hour during the great tribulation that are washing their robes in the blood of the Lamb because their robes have become dirty, because their robes have become spotted. No, get your robes clean now. Make sure your robes are clean every day. Make sure you continually keep your robe washed in the blood of the Lamb Amen? Hallelujah. Every day. Every day. Make sure there's no spots, no wrinkles, not any such thing. Keep yourself ready at all times. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hear the voice of the captain. Of the Lord of hosts. I hear his voice. He's coming people. Can you hear the trumpet sounding? Can you hear that trumpet? The voice of a trumpet. Sounding loud. Right now. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. The Lord said. Do you hear the trumpet? Remember the church is going to be raptured at the last trump. The trumpet's already sounding. Right now, this is the trumpet, the word of God, the truth. There'll come a time when the trumpet will cease, and at the last trump, the church will go up. Are you listening? It's interesting how 
there's a person running. His name is Trump, running for president. I think that's interesting. A man that's defiled, a man that's anything but conservative, running as a conservative. Doesn't believe he needs to be forgiven. Listen, folks, that's not the trumpet of the gospel. That's not the trumpet of truth. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is near. It is nigh at hand. Amen? Sound the trumpet in Zion. Glory to God. Sound the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm. Praise God. We must separate ourselves. We must. We read in the book of Jude, and some, having compassion, making a difference. The word difference means to separate yourself from them. Make sure there's a difference between you and them. And make sure they know there's a difference between you and them. This is no hour to be a chameleon a Christian chameleon that that fits in with the world. The world should know you are not like them. If the world ever thinks that you're like them, you've become defiled. You've become spotted. You've become wrinkled. But thank God there's power in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. You can come back to the fount. You can come back and wash your robe in the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. You don't get a robe unless you've been saved. So I'm talking about robes of the righteous that have become defiled. You've got to keep your robe clean. Once you get saved, you've got to keep that robe clean. You've got to keep that robe unspotted. Amen. Keep it unwrinkled. Hallelujah. Thank God. There's coming a day we won't have to keep it clean. Won't have to keep it from being wrinkled anymore. Won't. There's coming a day we'll have a glorified body. Amen. Solidifying. Glory to God. But that day hasn't come yet. So you and I must stay in the truth. You and I must abide in the truth. You and I must keep ourselves in the love of God. You and I must keep ourselves clean, holy, pure. We must keep on every day cleaning ourselves, staying clean. Do not let anything in your life go without being washed in the blood. Everything must go through the blood. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ is our filter. Amen. If it makes it through the blood, you can have it. If it doesn't make it through the blood, you can't have it. It must be accepted in the beloved. Through the filter. The blood the truth, the word. Hallelujah. Let that become the filter of your mind, the blood of Jesus, the truth, the word of God. Let that become your filter. If it does not make it through the filter, it is not going to be accepted. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let that mind be in you. Don't let thoughts come in that don't go through the blood. Are you listening? There are thoughts that can't go through the blood. There are thoughts 
There are ideas that will never be accepted through the blood. Hallelujah. We must only allow the thoughts that are accepted through the filter of the blood of Jesus Christ, people. Cast down those imaginations, those thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Take them into captivity. Tear them down. Don't let them in. Amen. Did you know that this new world order is a big idea? George Bush Sr. said, what's at stake here is a, is a big idea. It's a big idea. Well, we don't let that idea in. Amen? We don't let evil thoughts in. We reject evil thoughts. What's an evil thought, Brother Joseph? When you are suspicious of somebody else, that's an evil thought. Suspicion is evil in the eyes of God. Did you know you can have something better than suspicion? You can have the truth. You can know the truth. You don't have to be guessing and wondering. You can know. Amen? We can know. We don't have to be like those that are scratching their heads today that are full of uh, ideas of conspiracy. No, we can know what's going on behind the scenes. God showed Ezekiel. He took him in behind the wall and showed them what the ancients were doing. Ezekiel saw firsthand what the ancients were doing in dark, in the dark, <clears throat> with their censers in their hands and worshiping Satan. Are you listening? God took Ezekiel in and let him see what they were doing. Inside that cave. The same cave that's in Jerusalem right now. The same cave, Zedekiah, that on the other side of that cave in Jerusalem is where Jesus was crucified. They shut that cave down different times of the year and they do rituals in those caves. That's where the, the first lodge got its start in Jerusalem because of the ritual they performed in that cave. That's the same cave that Ezekiel dug into through the wall. The wall in the temple. See, what they had done is they had dug out and quarried out the rocks to build the temple, and there was caves, caverns left behind. And the ancients were down underneath in those caverns. That's what Solomon was doing, people. They took the ark, they took the things in the temple and brought them and put them down there. And they used the very things of God to worship the devil with. They used the golden censers. That's why God says, abomination. I'll show you greater abominations, Ezekiel. God showed them worshiping the sun with their backs to the temple. That's what's going on today. Now, back in the Old Testament, it was the vessels. Vessels of gold. Listening? It was those vessels that were supposed to be in the temple of God. But in the New Testament, you're that vessel. And if you are allowing that temple to worship the devil in any way, how are you any different than what the ancients were doing? If you're defiling that temple, if you're allowing things of the world to come in through the ear gate, the eye gate, into that temple, if you're defiling that vessel, God says, you defile that vessel and I'll destroy you. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. You're to glorify God in your body, which is God's. You're not your own. Holy vessels. Not to be used 
to entertain the world, to worship the world. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord knows what's going on. He knows the thoughts in our chambers of our minds. Amen. God knows your thoughts. The Lord knows your thoughts, friend. He knows what you're thinking about. See, that's the idea we have today. We think God doesn't know. Yes, He does. He knows your thoughts. So let us repent if we've had evil thoughts. Anything that's not pleasing to the Lord. Amen? Let us be holy. Let us be holy. Let us be pure. Let us be undefiled. Let us be righteous. The devil's trying to shut this voice down. (coughs) Pray for Brother Joseph. This gospel must be preached. God bless you.